The law of gravity, so Einstein's gravity, is the main law of physics that on large scales governs how the universe works. I'm a cosmologist, so I ask questions about the universe. And so some of the questions I have are kind of, how much of the whole universe can we understand? And how do we, if we think of the universe right now, how much of it do we, do we think we know how it's working? How do we come to be here over sort of the course of the universe's history? Um, and, and how much can we really know? This is, comes to this idea of like having a theory of everything or uh, some idea that we understand, really understand the physics of everything in the universe. And so what I want to do is, first of all, spend a good amount of time telling you what I think we do know. Because we know an amazing amount about how the universe, the whole thing, is put together and it's the laws of physics that do govern it. But there are these questions remaining and I'll, I'll, you know, we'll think about whether we can or can't know them. But I want to start with what we do know, because we know an incredible amount. OK, so I'm going to take you on a little tour of um, a tour of what's in the universe and some of the things we do and don't understand. And one of the ways in which we can, it's this incredible gift being astronomers and looking in the sky, that whenever you look out into space, you look back in time because you have to catch light that's traveling to you. You look out and you receive light from outer space. And so the further you look, the further back in time you can see. And what that means is just by sitting here on Earth and looking out, we can piece together the, how the universe is put together now and actually was put together in the past. Um, so our nearest part of space, this is the, the, the band of light of our Milky Way galaxy that we live in. Um, that we're here in our, in our solar system as part of this disk of stars. And, and just looking at the, the night, the stars in the night sky, you know, you're looking years back in time. When you look at Orion's belt, you're seeing stars that, you know, that his light set off a thousand years ago just to reach us. Um, and, and, our, and our Milky Way galaxy that we're a, that, that's our huge kind of local home um, might look a little bit like this except this isn't ours. This is someone else's galaxy, someone else's home. When we sit here on Earth and look out, you can see a galaxy like this. This, is, this will be a, a, a beautiful spiral disk of about 100 billion stars gathered together in this enormous object who's, where light might take 100,000 years to cross from side to side. And that object is so much bigger than our own solar system, which itself is huge. But our own solar system, the light from the sun sets off and in eight minutes it gets to us out on Earth and in about five hours it gets out to Neptune. So the scale of our solar system where, you know, we're 100 million miles from Earth, it's sort of minutes and hours that light takes to cross it. But this kind of object, a galaxy, is like 100,000 years that light would take and light is the fastest thing we know. If this were ours, our Milky Way is a little bit like this. We'd be living kind of halfway out from the middle to the edge in one of these spiral arms. We're just a little star in our spiral arm of our galaxy. But we could never see ours like that because you can't get outside our own galaxy. All you can see is a band of light when we're really lucky and it's not very cloudy. <laughs> um, and you can see the stars uh, from living inside the disk. But you can never step outside and see it. So it's amazing you can see other ones. So that's kind of how we piece together the universe is that we look out and we see other, other people's homes uh, and, and, and see what they look like. So this would be um, just one example of, of many. And if we take a sort of step further back, galaxies themselves, if we kind of keep trying stepping out in scale in space, galaxies gather into these groupings of clusters of galaxies. This is a cluster um, of galaxies, every spot of light is an entire galaxy of 100 billion stars or so. Um, and and it, the thing that pulls them together is gravity. And this I'll come back to this later, but the, the, the law of gravity, so Einstein's gravity, is the main law of physics that on large scales governs how the universe works. And it pulls these kind of, these beautiful, uh, each of these, these, these uh, gatherings of stars into this, into this sort of conglomeration. But even just seeing this image, you're looking back two billion years back in time. The, this, the, the light that's come from this image to our telescopes 
traveled for a couple of billion years uh, to get to us. And if we then kind of survey the whole sky, we see, um, this is a deep, a deep image from the, the Hubble Space Telescope, um, where just zooming in on a tiny little piece of space, you see the, 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 the sky just like spotted with, with, with many, many tiny galaxies. And if we then kind of like imagine the whole universe around us, we think that there's, you know, at least a trillion galaxies filling it. Um, and each of them with kind of 100 billion stars or so. And the whole thing really is governed by, on these large scales, the law, the, the, just the laws of gravity. Gravity pulls things, um, uh, pulls things together and makes things behave in ways that I'll get onto. Now, so if we say, okay, we're saying, okay, how much do I know about the universe? Well, I, I can say that it's full of these, on the larger scales, it's full of galaxies and grouped into clusters of galaxies. But it turns out that that's only a small part of what's actually out there. Um, and, and when I look in the night sky, or when you look in the night sky and see the beautiful stars, or with the telescopes, you see the galaxies, you're only seeing this small amount of what's actually out there. And the analogy I quite like is, imagine looking down at night as an astronaut, and all you see are the lights. But you don't see the dark uh, fields and rivers and, uh, and, and land below. All you see are the bright lights of the cities and the people. And, and we've now come to realize that when we look out into space, uh, that the universe seems to be a bit like that. That when we see the lights of the galaxies, that they're only a small part of what actually is out there. And this was realized by a number of people, but the person who I think made the biggest leap in understanding of this was my, one of my heroes, Vera Rubin, who figured out in the 1970s that there was more stuff out there than there should be. And what I love about this, this, this what, what she did, and just the way that we can do physics by sitting here on Earth, is she worked out how to weigh galaxies just by observing them. Okay, which, is a, which is an interesting challenge because, you know, you can't go into space and weigh a galaxy. You, how, do, you know, how do you look and find out how, some, how much something weighs? And, and what she did was look at how fast galaxies are spinning around. And, and Newton's law of gravity and then I, even Einstein's law of gravity tells us that things should move faster if there's more mass to pull them. Okay? If our sun was suddenly made much, much heavier, we would zip around it faster our year would be shorter. Um, okay, and so she figured out that there was more to a galaxy than meets the eye uh, by looking at this. And so you can imagine that when you see like there's a beautiful disc that I showed you first, this kind of like spiral disc of a galaxy, it's just this tiny bit in the middle of a, not perfectly spherical, but a much, much larger conglomeration of completely invisible matter. Invisible stuff that appears to follow the laws of gravity, okay? And we now know, know it as dark matter, but we have no idea what it is, <laughs> okay? That's the situation we're in. We've been in it for 50 years or more, that a large proportion of our universe is something that we've seen to be there, or not seen, but inferred to be there, but don't know the nature of. Um, and, and, and we think it kind of behaves like a bit like looks a bit on very, very large scales like neurons in the brain. So this is an image of a computer simulation of what we think this invisible dark matter looks like if we could only see it with, you know, dark matter tuned eyes. Uh, and it would be like this, uh, these, these clump, huge clumpings together of, of this invisible matter and interspersed with these filaments that stretch between these huge clumps. Um, and we don't get to see that because we haven't got the right telescope. We, you know, we can't actually see this stuff. It seems to be completely invisible. But we do think it's there, but we haven't yet found out what it is. Now, I feel pretty confident or hopeful that we will find out what it is. There are some things that I think I'm less confident that we will figure out. But finding out what this stuff is, I hope we can do. And one of the reasons is that we think it just follows the law of gravity like everything else. And so trying to, we can map it out and then we can try and understand what it might be. To continue watching this video,
click the link in the top left or in the description below. With a free trial, you can enjoy the full talk and thousands more. Thank you for being part of the conversation.